Hey, everybody, I'm John Granado, and that's Josh Jordan. You can hear us on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. I'm on mornings during the week, and Josh is on, on the weekends. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, please do right there on your computer so that you can get all our content here at SportsMap H-O-U. Hey, this week, Josh, the, uh, we got the news that Mark Ingram was traded to the Saints. One guy wasn't all that happy, was not all that happy. Brandon Cooks had an interesting reaction for a team that preaches about culture how telling was the response uh, from a guy who was supposedly supposedly an Easterby guy. He wrote, this is BS, but he put out the words, the words, the two bad words, the bad words. <laughs> he put that out there and he said, what a joke. Now, this is the same guy, the same guy that called this team out for the culture of nobody working hard, how you've got to prepare. And this team just wasn't doing it. That same guy is calling this organization a joke. How long before Brandon Cooks gets traded from the Houston Texans? Uh, let me check my phone real quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it might just happen. Down. Yeah. I mean, clearly, I, I think he's frustrated. And now I think he wants out. I, I think he will get traded. We've seen a Minahue be a healthy scratch because some stuff he's put out on social media in the last few weeks. Now he, he played in the Cardinals game, but he'd missed a few games for doing something similar. So I think, I think Brandon cooks could be on his way out and you can't blame him. He, I think he fell for this culture BS from Jack Easterby in the organization. I think that one and two, he sees how bad the situation is by the time this team is even winning four five, six games He's going to be well past his prime. So I think that's starting to occur to him. And the other things that occurring to me, maybe that DeAndre Hopkins guy, maybe he wasn't such a bad culture fit. Maybe he was just fine. He just didn't buy into the, the Jack Easterby nonsense. And this means a lot coming from Brandon Cooks. I mean, remember, he retweets this guy all the time. Mm -hmm. he, he openly talked about how much he liked Brandon Cooks, and Cooks would ask him to come pray with him. Uh, you know, so th this, is, this was a tight relationship, and this tells me that nobody's buying what's going on with the Texans. Well, and, 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 and listen, he thought bringing in – mid-level guys, veterans, instead of playing with really young guys was going to be maybe the best way to go about this. And he's finding out it's wrong when you're really, really bad. And you're a veteran and you just came over because you thought you had an opportunity. You need more than an opportunity. You need some hope that the organization can win, that you're not the doldrums, that you're not a laughing stock in the league. And those veterans are not going to have that kind of a great attitude. If I'm a young guy that made a team that I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't even be in the NFL. I'm going to thank the Lord every day. Thank the Lord Jack Easterby Lord every Easterby. single day that I'm, uh, that I'm on an NFL team. But if I'm Grugier Hill or Pierre Lewis or, Marcus Cannon or, or any of these guys that you brought in. I'm like, what are we doing here? I've been on some good teams and now this is what we're doing and we're doing everything wrong. We've got a coach that has to admit every single week of the mistakes that he makes and how he would do things differently. You need a young team that can maybe blend together, that you can find out if guys can play because these guys that are mid-level guys anyway, aren't going to be here next year. They're not, you're not building anything for the, all you're building. You see how these guys are all reacting now. They hate it here. They hate this organization. They do. And they should, they have eyes and ears. They have every reason for that. And, and look how much has changed in a year. Remember last year, cook said that if he got traded around the deadline, that, that he would, he would retire before he got traded again. You know, Deshaun was here, but remember that was a, a four and 12 football team. And he was saying he'd retire before he'd get traded. And, and the other thing I think of, look what they got for Mark Ingram, another late round pick that Casario can trade for some guy that he cuts two weeks later. I don't even feel like they got anything decent. Yeah, no, nothing. Listen, Casario's brought in here and he's an experienced. You would think that the embarrassing PR would end because you've got an experienced guy, executive running the team. This, there's more public turmoil now with this. And it, it, it's there, Jack Easterby is still here. He's, he's still a guy that you have to look at in this organization and say, what are you doing here with this? Why is this guy here? This guy was responsible, in large part, responsible for the situation that this organization is. Why is he still 
here? I, I, I don't have an answer for that. It, clearly he's just tight with the McNairs, you know, Cal and Hannah, and maybe even Janice that they like Jack. They think he's great. And Casario, I guess is like, Hey, he got me a job, but I'm starting to really doubt Casario. You know, I thought he'd come in, clean some stuff up. We'd be in a better situation, but it's more of the same stuff. You got Cal McNair apologizing for racially insensitive marks this week remarks. You have Deshaun Watson. It looking like the leaked Deshaun Watson trade might make this not happen. Looks like they screwed that up. It's all the same. And in players, coaches, agents, they all talk. Nobody wants no. to come here. <laughs> 